Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite finishing tools in Photoshop. It's called Selective Color. Now, it's not like hue saturation adjustment. This is actually a nice natural way to boost the colors in your image by just applying percentages of color. It's kind of like you're an artist mixing colors on the canvas of your image. And it can be very powerful and very effective for making some beautiful looks in your images. So I'm going to show you how to boost sunsets. I'm going to show you how to make a cinematic approach and I'm going to show you how to make green grass more green. So here's our sunset look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Nice, beautiful sunset back there. Very subtle. Here is the cinematic approach. This tones down those blacks. And here is the greener grass look on our images. Now I know that sometimes this stuff can be hard to remember. So what I've done is I've created a series of actions for you, but wait till the very end to download them because I want you to understand how selective color works before you just start pushing buttons. All right, so I'm gonna use a selective color adjustment layer to show you how to dramatically boost your images. And all the images I'm gonna show here are pretty much what I call finished images anyway. They've gone through the technical perfection of tone and color, and now I'm just polishing things off a little bit. And I'm gonna do that with the finishing effect using selective color. Now, before we begin though, I don't want you to think that selective color and hue saturation are the same or even remotely similar, okay? So before we begin with selective color, let's talk about hue saturation real quick. The hue saturation adjustment layer, if we look at this, we can break our image down from the master, which is all the colors in the image, or reds, yellows, greens, cyans, and blues. Now watch what happens if I go into the blues. Then I take the hue adjustment and I move it over. I can actually change the color blue to whatever hue that I want to. Sure, I can make it a little bit more magenta and I can boost up the saturation and the light and dark in that color blue. And I could be creating some more drama with the blues in my sky, but I'm gonna tell you, it's not the most effective way to have a polished edge over that color blue. Because if you look, you know, even if we were to dock these settings down a little bit here and go, it's just not quite giving it that oomph that it needs. And this is where you would use something like the selective color tool. So I'm gonna go down to the adjustment layer and go to selective color. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to boost sunsets and make them a little bit more dramatic using selective color. So selective color is a little bit different here in that you don't see hue, you don't see saturation, and you don't see luminance, do you? If we look at our color here, we look at the color blue, like we picked on with the hue saturation adjustment layer. I have cyan with a percentage, magenta with a percentage, yellow with a percentage, and black with a percentage. Now, if I move this cyan up all the way up, what I'm doing there is I'm adding 100% cyan to that color blue. Or if I bring it down, I'm removing 100% cyan from that color blue, and the resulting color is actually adding red because the opposite of cyan on the color wheel or the digital color wheel is going to be red. So by removing the percentage of cyan from the image, I'm effectively adding red. Okay, so if we bump this up a little bit and get a little bit more cyan in there, that looks good. Now we can go down to magenta. If I bring this up, it's gonna add a percentage of magenta to the color blue. But notice how, unlike the hue saturation adjustment layer, it's not actually making my blues magenta. It's just adding a percentage of magenta to my blues. If I bring this down, it's going to add green to my blue because the opposite of magenta on the color wheel is green. So let's just bring that up to a little bit up here, about, about you know, plus 39 or so, because we're adding something to the sunset. Now yellow, if we bring this up, it's gonna add yellow to our sunset. If we bring it down, it's gonna add more blue. Here's where you kind of get into saturation because we're dealing with the color blue. If I want more blue, I make a more saturated form of blue. So if we turn this layer on and off, you can see that what we've just done there is we've effectively boosted the sunset in our image here, just in the color blue. So if I bring a little bit more magenta in there, it gets a little bit more of that ma magical feeling and maybe even bring in some of that red, it's gonna give us more of that reddish type of sunset.
Now that's just with the color blue. So if I were to come down here into maybe the color magenta, you can see that with the color magenta, we can make that sky a little bit more magical. We can take some of the cyan out of there, really boost up some of those reds, boost up the magentas, maybe add a little bit of blue or yellow to that magenta. But here, the black percentage is how dark or how light you're making that magenta. Notice how if I bring that percentage down, we're removing black from that magenta and we're giving it a little bit more white or we're adding more black to that magenta and giving it a little bit more darkness to that color magenta. So that's how we would effectively boost up the sunset in our image. Now there is no magenta or blue in the foreground of my image. If there were, I would be using my mask right now and I'll be painting those areas out. All right, so another way that we can boost the colors in our image using the selective color is to make our greens look more green. So this is an image in Hawaii off the Hawaii coast off the North Shore. Absolutely gorgeous night to be shooting. There was a C-130 flying by, unfortunately, for reasons uh, that probably are not uh, very good. Um, search and rescue operation, but it did lend for a nice photographic opportunity. So looking at this photograph, I like the magentas that are going on in it, but the magentas are competing with the green in the foreground, and I kind of want to boost up the green in the foreground. One of the biggest mistakes I see in landscape photography is individuals will shoot the landscape, and grass is typically green, like sometimes really green, not on uh, the so much extreme of yellow. But when you bring your image into Photoshop and you start editing it, most of that green color actually exists in the color yellow. So in order to avoid the mistake of having these blah kind of drab yellow grasses, we can use selective color to boost up the yellow in the grass. So if I go down here and go to selective color, I can take the color up here and change that to yellow. And here I can add more cyan to the color yellow to boost up some of the green kind of nature in that color yellow. Notice how it's not actually adding cyan really. What it's doing is it's mixing the cyan with the current amount of yellow that's already in there or the colors that are creating that color yellow. This is like the, the most effective way to paint with colors on your canvas as, as I like to refer to it. And then if we bring up the magentas, we're gonna be removing the green from that yellow. But if we bring it down, we're gonna be adding green to that yellow. And we go into the yellows, we can actually add some more yellow to the yellow or add some blue to the yellow. So you see how what we're doing here is we're, we're just modifying the, the existing color in that color yellow. So we're adding either more yellow to it, we're reducing the magenta by adding green to it, or we're adding cyan to it. Now this is toxic green. We don't want toxic green. So what we can either do is we can increase the amount of black and the contrast in there, reduce it, or we could just maybe come down here and lower our magenta a little bit, add a little bit more magenta to that color green, maybe take some of that cyan out of there so we aren't so heavy handed. That's kind of a more realistic color of green, but I will also tell you this, that usually in those greens that we t see as yellow, there's also little bits of green in there. So if we go into the green color, we can kind of reverse this. We can maybe add some uh, more yellow to that green we can add some more magenta to that green and then maybe even add a little bit of cyan to that green and make that green a little bit darker. Notice how the green is typically going to be the highlights of those yellows there. Now, if we look at our before and after, it looks pretty good. What we can do here is because we have all of our blending options available to us, if this changed the luminosity of that grass in any way, shape or form, I could change this down here to color. So it's no longer going to affect the luminosity or the tones that are underneath there and only apply that selective color to the color. We also have the ability to drop our opacity here. So this is another way that you can use the selective color to apply a nice little finishing touch to make our greens a little bit more green. If they are effectively a little too green here, but you like the green that you have, just drop that opacity a little bit, maybe drop it to 75%, take a quarter of it away. And now we have, I think, a much more effective green, if we zoom in here. It's a nice color green rather than the dull drab yellow that is not necessarily working very well with our magenta sky. Notice how our magenta sky definitely takes away from the yellow grass now, but when we turn this on, our yellow grass starts to take away from our magenta sky and we're pushing and pulling the eye throughout the image. All right, so I have one more way that I can show you how to boost up your images with a finishing touch using selective color in Photoshop. And this one, uh, what we looked at before was boosting sunsets. We looked at boosting uh, greens, uh, turning yellows into 
more greens. And now what we're going to do is look at how we can make a cinematic effect in Photoshop using these exact same techniques. So if you go in here and we go down to our selective color, if you look at our selective color here under colors, look at how we have whites, neutrals and blacks. Pretty cool, huh? Well, if I click on the color black, this is going to allow me to make the black more black or remove some of the black from the color black by adding white to that black, which gives us that cinematic look and feel almost immediately. Look at that. Okay. Around negative 10 should work. That's good. But what you can also do here is maybe add a little bit of yellow or a little bit of warmth to that reduction, that cinematic reduction. I just added a little bit of yellow to it. Or we could come into our cyans. We could drop the cyans and add a little bit of red to it. And now we have a very quick, very simple, very easy cinematic effect happening on our photograph. This is where blend if comes in though, because if this is too much and you're saying, well, that's not just affecting my blacks, it's affecting everything. It's affecting all the blacks. Well, if we double click here, this is going to open up our layer styles options. Here's the color black. If I move this over, it's going to start protecting the color black from this selective color adjustment. But what I want to do is protect more of my midtones. So if I bring this all the way down to 128, that's going to be my midtone adjustment. If I press and hold alt or option, I can split and feather this down. See how it's nicely transitioning now in from my blacks into my midtones. I could even reduce this a little bit more so it doesn't affect those midtones or those lights at all. And we'll press OK. Sometimes you can't really see this unless we go into our history and we go back. Look at the difference. What we've done is we've effectively protected our midtones and our highlights from this selective color adjustment. So it's only applying itself to the color black. Again, we could use our blending options if we wanted to just apply the color that we've created from there. We could, but that's going to take away that black or we could come into luminosity and just affect the tones underneath there. But because we were using tone and color in that one adjustment, I'm going to say normal so that it lays the color on the underlying image and those tones on the underlying image. And what I would use to affect the uh, strength of it is the opacity setting here. Just drop that opacity just a little bit. And now we have a really good look on our image for a cinematic effect. Now, because I know that stuff can be very difficult to remember sometimes, I've created a series of actions for you that if you go to f64academy.com via the link right here in YouTube, or if you're on f64academy.com, you'll see it right above here. You can go ahead and install these actions. And right here, if you say cinematic neutral, let's go ahead and turn this layer off and press play on this. It'll give you a neutral cinematic look. If you press play on this one, it'll give you a cold cinematic look. If you press play on this one, it'll give you a warm cinematic look. And then I've also done the boost grass look. It's going to make this really green because this didn't necessarily need it as bad as the other one did. And then we also have a boost sunset. So if we were to open up these, we'll go ahead and make sure that this layer is off and we'll say boost grass. Nice little green grass boost. And then if we open this one up, we can go ahead and say boost sunset and get a nice little sunset boost there for this image. So you're free to download these free of charge. They are yours. What I really wanted to show you here was that the selective color adjustment is very versatile in that it's more of like a painter's palette of colors that you can apply to other colors in your image rather than uh, the die hard headstrong approach of the hue saturation adjustment layer. I like to use it as a finishing touch, typically use it towards the end of my workflow so that I can boost up the look in my images uh, really naturally without going too far overboard. Because as you saw with the hue saturation adjustment layer, it can have a very heavy hand. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. I sincerely thank you for taking the time to watch this and please download these actions, send them to a friend, tell them all about it because selective color is a very powerful way to make your images pop like that. Mm -hmm.